Welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. Now I wanted to start by bringing up some economic realities. Because a lot of people out there, they seem to be believing reports that somehow the US economy is the greatest economy we've ever seen. We're existing right now in America's greatest economy. And I just wanted to take a little rewind right now, just so you can get some statements actually from Donald Trump. This was November 2012. And what he said, now this was on Fox News, and he said that there was a very ugly picture where the country was headed. And According to that interview, he said the United States is no longer a rich country. He said, quote, when you're not rich, you have to go out and borrow money. We're borrowing money from the Chinese and others. We're up to $16 trillion in debt, unquote. And so he was pointing out at that time that a downgrade to the U.S. debt was inevitable. And he said, quote, we are going up to $16 trillion in debt very soon. And it's going to be a lot higher than that before he gets finished. When you have debt in the 21 to $22 trillion range, you are talking about a downgrade no matter how you cut it. Now, may I remind you that we actually just crossed over the $22 trillion for the debt. Now, it's not just debt because there's other numbers I've been pointing out recently, and I just wanted to really show you the, the truth because really he was speaking the truth back then because... You know, he did make a mistake. I believe that he should never have taken credit for the economy. Ultimately, presidents have no final authority about the direction of the economy. This is exactly the reason that he was going out and he was pretty much begging the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates low. He knows that the interest rates being at 0% have been the only thing continuing to give us this uh, facade, this image that the economy is strong. When the interest rates began to rise only slightly, just a little blip, we see there's chaos throughout the entire financial system. The, really, the system cannot stand on its own. It requires enormous amounts of debt, enormous amounts of quantitative easing. And he also didn't just talk about debt and the credit downgrade that are inevitable. Those weren't the only worries. But he, what he said was about the official unemployment rate. He said, quote, it isn't a real number, oh, unquote. So the real figure at that time, of course, in 2012, he said is closer to 15% or 16%. He even mentioned that some believe the unemployment rate at the time was as high as 21%. And the way he worded it was right now, frankly, the country isn't doing well. Recession may be a nice word, unquote. And so I wanted to ask right there, what changed between then and now? Yes, the stock market has per been performing extremely well. What is the reason behind it? When you look into what's going on behind market action for 2019, stock buybacks are running 91%. And ultimately, we're only at the beginning of the year. So we are looking for another record year of stock buybacks. So companies artificially are massaging their numbers by simply purchasing their own stock. They're the only ones out there that are purchasing these stocks. So how is that a representation of the economy? It's not. And to tell you the truth, it's really a disservice to their investors, to those that are out there investing in their companies. It's really providing a lot of distortion. It's preventing the market from being able to come out and to actually uh, price in fair value to really get an you know, adequate understanding about where a stock actually stands or where a company actually stands. All of this is only possible in an ultra low or 0% interest rate area. As soon as interest rates begin to rise, the stock buybacks, they stop because companies no longer are encouraged to go out and to take out enormous amounts of debt and to just directly put that money into the stock market. You see, whenever any of these corporations come out and get any kind of boost in money, now, because we know the sales aren't there. We saw the sales figures. They're dreadful. If we see another month come out like this, it's over. Everything's out in the open. I mean, what's gonna be the story at that point? So the sales aren't there. But worse than that, all of this massive amounts of corporate debt, what we have going on in America is a very new phenomenon, which is the zombie companies. These companies, who do not even make enough in sales, they don't even have enough in gross revenue to be able to cover their interest payments. This also is only possible in ultra low or 0% interest rates. Ultimately, we don't have an economy anymore, not a functioning economy that is. It requires that they keep interest rates at 0%. And you know what? Pretty soon, that is not going to be low enough. They're going to need to implement negative interest rates. They're going to straight need to start handing out. And you know, this all stems back 
It comes back to one of the worst speeches of our time, one of the greatest problems that we've had, not just for our economy, but the world economy, because you see the, pr the same problem working through all of these interconnected central banks. And that problem is this idea of helicopter money, this idea that somehow that we're going to be able to print our way to prosperity. Now, keep in mind, Ben Bernanke was talking about that back in 2002. He was coming out and discussing the subject of helicopter money, the subject of uh, keeping interest rates low. So why is it six years before the financial crisis came ar around as a result of these, the subprime mortgage section completely having a blowout, that he's already talking about what would be implemented at that point. And, you know, at that time, it was thought to be insane. It, it was thought to be insanity to implement 0% interest rates. It just couldn't be done as far as I knew. So this was actually a, a grand experiment. That's what we're living in. So distortions aren't the only problem. We're actually not able to get back to any form of normalized interest rates here in the United States. The number one driver that has been pushing the stock market to all time highs, to new highs, has been the availability of this liquidity the availability of corporations not only to borrow because they also benefited from the tax cut, but this availability of this easy and clear pathway for them to inject money directly into the stock market. This is how it's done. And you have to admit it's developing a lot of froth at the top because the numbers, they're not looking solid. But yet we still see new highs constantly. How long do you think that can go on? Because as the debt continues to grow, and you know what? When he brought up about the national debt, there is some people that come out and they discuss the national debt and they talk about when a country creates its own currency and the people that we elect have no control over what the Federal Reserve does, what they say. They have no control over their policy whatsoever. Everything that we have the Federal Reserve do ultimately either comes through begging, through pleading, and he's a smart man. And this is how you can prove that he still believes this stuff, despite what he says, because, you know, people say, well, why don't you believe him? Why don't you just believe these people? Do you know more than them? Here's the problem. They don't believe it. And ultimately, they have an enormous incentive to lie about the economy, an enormous incentive, because they can't actually tell us that things are doing poorly. They can't actually tell us that things are doing bad, because ultimately, it was only a few short months and he stepped in and he claimed the stock market as his own. And so it has appeared as his own independent success. And, you know, for some parts of it, the tax cut has also injected tons and tons of funds into the stock market. But this is exactly how you know that he still believes that. That call that was made over to the Federal Reserve, and there was even discussion at that point about firing Jerome Powell and putting in a new Federal Reserve chairman who was going to implement and continue this easy money train, this 0% interest rates, or accommodative policy, whatever uh, new term that they continuously have to keep regurgitating in a different form just to make sure that we never uh, keep hearing the same thing too many times and start to realize uh, that this train is only going one direction. So he believes that the economy is still as he described in 2012, because every time the Federal Reserve got together and they were having discussions and they came out and agreed that they were going to raise interest rates by a 0.25 basis points, he asked them to stop every time. And those calls got louder and louder until he was directly addressing it. And then all of a sudden news stories were circulating all over the place that he was ready to fire Jerome Powell because he's not really going with the program. It's amazing how many people were out there at that time and it just shows how disconnected we are from who the Federal Reserve is, they were saying, this is horrendous. How could, a how could a president come out and interfere with an independent banking system? The Federal Reserve needs to be independent, needs to be separate from any kind of influence from our elected officials for it to maintain our economy. These people don't work for you. And you're saying the people who you put into th those places should not interfere with what they're doing. And it really affects the outcome of your life. It really affects the living standards that we have in the United States. Everything, it stems from what the Federal Reserve is doing. Ultimately, they don't want to tell you just how doomed this economy is because if they tell you, people will stop spending. People will begin to take their money out of the banks. And, you know, this is something we're already beginning to see. We're already beginning to see defaults rise. We're already beginning to see a serious contraction in the housing market just simply by just what little bit they raised interest rates.
And notice how well the stock market reacted after December and after Christmas Eve when we saw those huge, massive losses. Look how well the market has reacted since then. Because everyone talks about this rebound, don't worry, the recession's over. And that's because the Federal Reserve entirely and totally changed their speech. So he's going to be going, Jerome Powell's going to be going before Congress to go and answer some questions about his reversal of his uh, announcement of his policy because they've completely changed their tune. Why is that? Because they know what everyone who truly understands the markets know, and also what Donald Trump knows, that we got nothing left. A country that does not produce anything? I mean, let's face it, folks. The best jobs that are going on in the United States, the, the highest volume of hiring, the highest volume of jobs, has been pretty much in the retail sector, in the restaurant sector, and food services. We're really not producing anything at this point. Everything that we do, including all of those amazing unemployment numbers, they are highly dependent on the continuation of consumption. But people have stopped going out to eat as much. People have stopped paying their car loans. People are stopping shopping around for new houses. People have begun not paying their student loans. The problem is it's inevitable. There's nothing anyone can do to stop it. In fact, when you go in and look at some of the information that they put out before all of this happened, they knew that this was going to be the direct consequence of their actions. This was always a pet project of Ben Bernanke's. And let me tell you what, no matter who's in charge, the people in charge will never tell you the truth. And the reason behind this is because they want you to view them favorably. And this eagerness and this push for higher and higher stock prices at any cost, by any means necessary, in the end of the day, it's only going to actually magnify the collapse when the time comes. I would love your comments on this video. Tell me what you think because you know a lot of people have been very vocal about this subject. I just happen to feel like honesty above all else is the most important. And I thank you guys for stopping by. Like the videos, share the videos. As always, stay safe.